I love my morning cup of coffee, and I know I'm not alone in this, because each year, nationally, we consume 1.96 million 60 kilo bags of beans. And that approximates to the average Australian consuming almost two kilos of beans every year. Now, while most of our coffee is imported, I'm going to show you how to make your very own homegrown variety. Coffee is grown commercially in humid subtropical areas like Queensland's Atherton Tablelands. Australia's first commercial coffee crop was grown on Sydney's North Shore, but it will also grow quite happily as far south as Chile, Melbourne. I grow two varieties of coffee in my garden. The first is First Fleet, and it gets its name after the way in which it arrived in the country. It's a full-size plant. It'll grow between three and five metres high. And when the fruit are ripe, they're typically red. The other variety I grow is Camarunga Dwarf. This was developed by Queensland's Department of Primary Industries, and it produces yellow cherries. The plant grows to half the size of my First Fleet coffee. Now, while these cherries are edible, it's the seeds that are hidden within which coffee drinkers crave, and they're known as coffee beans. When you're growing coffee, the biggest enemies are drought and sunburn. They really need protection from hot western sun and drying winds. So I'm growing mine in the shelter and shade of a fence and neighbouring trees. To get a good crop in Brisbane, they really need a reliable supply of water. So in hot, dry, windy weather, I water mine deeply twice a week. In warmer areas where there's enough rainfall, coffee has become an environmental weed, including in both Queensland and New South Wales. Birds eat the berries and can spread the plant near and far. If you want to grow coffee, check it's not a concern in your area. Prune to keep it to a manageable size and harvest the fruit before the birds get to them. You prune coffee annually after you pick the harvest and the aim of pruning is to reduce the number of laterals, to increase airflow and that improves the set and quality of the fruit. Now coffee produce fruit on the new season's growth. So the idea of reducing some of the stems back to the base encourages long shoots like this, and then they flower and fruit evenly. After flowering, I nourish them with iron chelates and potash to encourage fruit formation. Now, I'm not the only one that enjoys my coffee. Occasionally, possums and flying foxes will eat the fruit. And when they do, I enclose my trees in this wildlife-friendly mesh. Now, you've got to remember to also tie it in at the bottom, otherwise they may sneak in underneath. To grow coffee, sow fresh seed on fresh propagating mix. You sow it on the surface, you only need to water them maybe once a week or once a fortnight. Too much water can actually impede germination. In fact, I find it much easier to allow a few seed to germinate at the base of the mother plant, and when they're big enough to handle, then I pop them up. This is the Camarunga Dwarf, and this is the First Fleet, and both are 18 months old. And now for the fun part, how to roast your coffee. I'm currently getting two kilos of beans from both of my trees. There's plenty on this Camarunga Dwarf, so let's work with these. Firstly, wash the cherries. Remove the bean from the fruit of the cherry. The flesh of the fruit is sweet and can be eaten fresh or dried. I put them in my muesli. Place your beans in some water, leaving them to ferment for a week. Change the water when it becomes cloudy overnight. A week later, strain and dry the beans on a tea towel. Put a wok on a burner and get it as high as it will go. Dry roast the beans in the wok while moving and monitoring the colour constantly. If you don't have a wok, you can use a pot, an air fryer, or even a popcorn maker. When they're a nice, even dark brown, turn off the heat. 
place the beans on a flat surface inside a tea towel and use a rolling pin to separate the outer skins from the beans. Next, you remove the skin fragments from the beans. This is a process known as winnowing. Then all you have to do is grind the beans and store them in an airtight container. It's a bit of an effort to make a cup of your very own homegrown, homemade coffee, but the flavour is as rich and as strong and as bitter as any other coffee I've ever bought. Plus, it's a very welcome way to start the day.